After four years under the CAQ government, Quebecers will head to the polls on October 3rd. We're speaking to Eric Duren, the leader of the Conservative Party of Quebec. Thank you so much for joining us, Mr. Duren. It's a pleasure, Tina. So uh, you've been trying to win over English voters, particularly recently with your position against Bill 96, the CAQ's new language reform. And you've said that you will repeat, repeal it, but you've also said that it's still important to protect the French language. So if you were elected, what would you replace it by? Well, I think, uh, and we saw the statistics uh, coming out lately that are showing a decline of French in Quebec. Uh, I looked at, at it carefully. Uh, I think we're all you know, cautious with that. We have to understand that you know, we, we think it's important to keep the uniqueness of Quebec, that French is the common language. And I think Anglophones are our allies to, to protect that reality right now in Quebec. So the difference between Francois Legault and I is that I don't want to poke the English community. I don't want to do anything against the English community. And if the French is declining in Quebec, it's not because of the English community. It's because the Francophone majority is not able to attract enough immigrants who are coming to Quebec. And that's what we were tar we, where we would target our, uh, you know, our energies. I think we should, we should uh, make sure that we have more immigrants that are integrating to the, the French community. And that's where we would work instead but not you know anglophones in quebec have historical rights they've been there forever they uh, you know they contribute tremendously to quebec and uh, they understand that french is the common language they're actually proud and happy because of it and they're more and more bilingual we also have to underline that so uh, I, I don't understand why mr legault is reacting the way he is uh, I'm, I'm very disappointed that for example he refused to have an english debate uh, during this campaign, he accepted four years ago. Now he doesn't want to talk to one million Quebecers. It's very unique in, the cam in an election campaign. And as you probably know, I even spoke English during the French debate this week we because I, I thought that it was important to talk to those people, even if Mr. Legault wants to uh, deprive us from doing it. You touched on immigration there, and I do want to uh, speak to you about your immigration uh, policy because we have heard the CAQ saying a lot during this campaign that um, immigration is a threat to the French language. Now, your party's stance is that immigrants would be selected based on a civilizational compatibility. So can you explain how well, that would work? What does that mean? It's just that it, it's common ground. I mean, we, you know, like women and men are equal in Quebec. As you know, I'm an openly gay leader, the first in, the, in Canada's history as a conservative. Um, and I think it's important that there are certain realities of, of Canada that uh, in Quebec that they need to know before they arrive. So there's already an interview process and I just wanna make sure that it's underlined uh, before they arrive. Uh, because the, uh, and, and the immigrants, by the way, if Mr. Legault think they're violent and they're a threat to Quebec, we're in bad shape, we're in trouble because we will need immigrants, like it or not, uh, Quebec society will decline otherwise. So we, you know, we have an obligation to better integrate our immigrants because otherwise there's no way, if you think we're gonna be able to solve all the problems ahead of us, with the decline of our population, it would be even worse. So the immigrants are also a positive impact to Quebec society. We just need to make sure that our language is also protected and promoted while we're accepting more immigrants. I want to speak to you about uh, Bill 21 now. That's been another uh, contentious yeah. bill, particularly among allophones and anglophones. Uh, it bars some public servants in positions of power, such as teachers from wearing religious symbols. Now, you've said that you are in favor of Bill 21, but a big message that we also hear from you is that you are against removing rights and freedoms from citizens. Doesn't Bill 21 remove rights and freedoms from certain religious citizens, well, such as Muslim women? It, it depends on which way you're looking at it, because as taxpayers, as citizens, you uh, we have a right to get services that are neutral from the state. I think that's very important. And uh, so it's the rights of the ones against the right of the others. Uh, I, I do believe in religious freedom. I think everybody has a right to protect its religious beliefs and, and there's no way we should interfere there. But when you're acting as a public servant, um, you, you, you have to be neutral because that's the state. You're not interfering as, as, as an individual, you're interfering as a representative of the state. And uh, that's where I see a difference, especially if you're in a position of authority uh, you know, it's even more important to do so. So I think it's a good compromise and uh, we, uh, we should move on. It's been very divisive, that debate. I see that a strong majority of Quebecers are supporting that bill and that approach. And I don't think anyone would win anything to reopen that kind of warm.
I want to talk to you a little bit more about rights and, and freedoms because your party has gained in popularity quite drastically. Yes. Um, much of that was during the pandemic. And you have been accused of kind of using some anger from those against vaccine mandates, perhaps some of those that, that were involved in, in the movement that we saw um, on Parliament Hill to gain some political popularity. Uh, what do you say to that? Was that your strategy? It was not a strategy. It's my beliefs. I mean, I decided personally to come back to politics when I saw the way they were managing the crisis. I'm someone who has always been involved to uh, defend and promote democracy, civic rights, individual freedoms. Uh, I never thought I would live in a state where the government would deprive me from going to see my mom and have dinner with her one day, or even go to my cottage, or even for some people, some co-workers to have the right to work with me. Um, I've never thought that we would have to show papers to have the right to go to a restaurant. I mean, we went very, very far in terms of civic rights, and individual freedoms over the last few um, years in Quebec. And I decided that there, there, you know, I saw four political parties defending that approach and there was nobody voicing anything else. I didn't know that if it was popular or not, I didn't do it by opportunism. Actually, when I decided to run for the leadership of the party, we were at 1% in the polls and we had 500 members. Now today we're at 20% in the polls and we have 60,000 members. So, and I think it's the strength of our beliefs that made, made us go up. It's not by opportunism. And I decided to defend those who, who, who were concerned about it and who wanted to, to protect their basic rights. That being said, it doesn't mean that the government has no rights to impose certain things, but before he does it, he needs to prove without a doubt that they're necessary. And it's not been the case during the crisis. There was a lot of politics and the science was often used by politicians more than promoted. And that really bugged me. Uh, so that's, yeah, Yuri. So yes, we went, we went up because there's more people like me, I guess, who believe in individual freedom and in civic rights, but we didn't certainly not do it by opportunism. I want to hear you now on uh, your party's position on sovereignty because we've heard kind of the two sides. We know that in your in in your political background, you did uh, work for the Bloc Québécois. You've said that you would vote no in a referendum, but also that the door is not shut to a referendum. So let's clarify your stance on that. Look, I don't think there's any appetite for any kind of referendum. I think it's time to unite Quebecers. We've been divided on that issue for way, way too long. It's time to unite Francophones and Anglophones also on linguistic feuds. Those feuds are of the past. I think we need to be allies together. Uh, under my leadership, there would never be any kind of referendum on separation. I'm not going to politics okay. uh, to have a referendum on politics. I'm, uh, I'm going in politics because I want to improve this, the healthcare system. I want to lower taxes. I want to give more freedom to people and respect their basic and civic rights. And just in 30 seconds now, um, why should Anglophones trust you? Because we heard this from the CAQ kind of four years ago. Monsieur Legault was trying to get Anglophone votes and his tune has changed. So why should we trust the Anglophone well, community? Should trust I you? think Anglophones should trust me because unlike uh, Dominique Anglade and the Liberals, I didn't betray you over the last four years. On Bill 96, they really flip-flopped. They abandoned you because they were looking for more voters. They take you for granted. They took you for granted for way too long. Now you have an opportunity to be courted by other people than the Liberals. Being hostage of one single party didn't serve you over the last few years. It's time to uh, for Anglophones to move on. There's a new debate coming in Quebec. There's a new split, politically speaking. The Liberals and the PQ are both at less than 10% right now among Francophones. We're in a new political reality, and I want the English community to be part of that new reality and join the Conservative Party for those of you who are in the center-right. Okay, thank you so much for your time today, Mr. Jem.